Ojeto Volante Non Identificato, or OVNI. Now we all know how to say UFO in Italian. And after you see this next video, you'll never need reminding. It's January 9th, 2017, and we're in the heel of the Italian boot. At 7.38 p.m., Lucio Margiota, a teacher at the Music Academy of Salento, records something strange in the sky. A glowing orb appears to bob in the sky. Then it slowly expands into an elongated cigar-like shape. Si sta aprendo. And continues to expand until it forms a circular donut. Oh mio Dio, signore. The light phases or shifts from a greenish hue to white. Then the light reverts back to its original shape and color before fading away. No, guarda, guarda, mo adesso si è fatta di nuovo. When we look to the skies, there are certain things that we expect to see there. A really bright star, a drone, a satellite, a meteor. What we're seeing in this video doesn't look like any of those things. Lucio's video is just the latest in a millennia of strange sights over Italy. Roman myth is rife with the gods behaving in strange ways that would often resemble odd lights in the sky. The Roman historian Livy wrote of phantom ships seen gleaming in the sky. Classical paintings depict what appear to be flying saucers. And it didn't stop in the Renaissance. In October 1954, UFOs actually stopped a football game in Italy. 10,000 people witnessed some strange ships up in the sky. Then in December of 1978, the New York Times reported a rash of donut-shaped objects spotted in the skies over Italy. So we have a wide variety of Italian ovni, and there are other accounts like this one from Oregon of lights undergoing shape and color shifts like the one Lucio reported. So what exactly is happening in the Italian skies? We've seen mystery rings in the sky before, but those turned out to be emissions from nearby smokestacks. They didn't emit any light. So let's turn to our expert in all things weather-related, Deanna Hintz. The weather was pretty calm with only scattered clouds, so there wasn't anything really happening during this particular time to suggest any kind of electrical activity from, say, a thunderstorm or something like that. Hens considers if it could be related to rings that form around the sun called halos and sun dogs. There are similar ones around the moon. Light passing from either the sun or the moon is bent and refracted by ice crystals that are very high up in the atmosphere. And you will see a sometimes brilliant halo around that light source. Some look almost like UFOs with one big difference. But you would still see the source of the light, either be the sun or the moon, in the center of that halo. Whereas here in this video, that center light source is blocked. Astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio notes that Lucio is zoomed into his camera's maximum magnification, which can exaggerate any distortions in the image. It was shot with a cell phone camera, and they're just not that good at taking nighttime photographs. The camera itself may have some junk on the lens. See, as it goes in and out of focus, okay, it's almost like there's moisture on the lens and he's just getting some video artifacts. I mean, if there's any kind of moisture on the lens, you can actually create some really kaleidoscopic objects from your camera. But while D'Antonio says that lens issue might create the circle image and the phasing, he still can't pinpoint the original source of that light in the sky. He rules out a laser or spotlight because they would have to reflect off the clouds. And it was a clear night. Beyond that, he stumped. I'm not saying that it's not an actual unidentified flying object. So it's a mystery. We don't know what it is exactly. There's currently no official explanation for this video from the Italian government. If the light came from a drone, a plane, or a helicopter, you would think they would have said so. So our verdict, a genuine ovni. And in the absence of any further evidence, this object remains unidentified. We take you back to 1971, the village of Belmez in Andalusia, Spain. Local resident Maria Gomez Camara discovers a strange discoloration on her concrete kitchen floor. Oddly, after a few days, it changes and forms what appears to be a face. She tries to scrub it away to no avail, so her husband then tears up the floor and re-cements it. But a week later, the face reappears in the floor, followed by several more. 
number of times. They've taken up the floor, they've tried to get rid of them, but the faces just keep coming back. Word quickly spreads about the phenomenon in Belmez. There's been a number of investigations and attempts at analysis of the site, and none of them have come up with any evidence of paint or tampering that would lead to a concrete explanation for the existence of the faces. Even stranger, while researchers were examining the site, a number of long expired human remains were found buried underneath the house, unbeknownst to the family. I was able to verify that there was a late 1800 cemetery in that location. It likely was a Catholic cemetery that was long forgotten, and when they needed room to build homes, they just go, went ahead and built a home over it without realizing that the headstones had been removed. A lot of the people that visited the Belmez faces thought that the bodies or the spirits or the souls uh, uh, beneath the home were showing themselves through these faces in the floor. The family has always insisted this was not a hoax. They weren't hand drawing the faces on their own floor. And though the mother Maria died in 2004, the image continues to draw visitors to the house to this day. But what are they really looking at? Our experts face off. First, perhaps this could all have been another example of pareidolia, the tendency of humans to see familiar shapes within randomly occurring patterns. But Andrew McCarthy isn't so sure. Some say that these images could be an accident. Maybe they simply spilled something on the floor which stained it and it resembled a face. Then why does the face keep reappearing time and time again? That seems to rule out a coincidence. Catholic miracle researcher Michael O'Neill says that while this resembles some confirmed miracles, it can't be classified as such. There's a case in the 1700s in Austria called Our Lady of Absam began to manifest the face of the Virgin Mary. The glass was wiped clean with acid and the image came back, according to the investigator. And as a result, they declared it to be miraculous. We don't have the same situation now. We don't see in real time the image returning, so it cannot be established as miraculous. A chemical engineering firm in Spain that analyzed the Belmez faces in 2014 told us their tests using infrared scanning and electron microscopes did not find any traces of inorganic materials like paint where the images appeared. But Mick West thinks it's very possible the faces weren't painted on, but instead created with another technique. It seems almost like they're removing areas rather than adding to the areas. It's very dark around the outside of the face and then it's white in the middle. So it could just simply be that they've added something like bleach, but then would eventually evaporate and you wouldn't really see any residue of that. Mick makes an interesting case for bleach, but the most recent testing did not detect bleach or paint. So our verdict, these strange faces remain an unexplained phenomenon until we get more concrete proof. March 2021, the Fagra Dolsviak volcano in Iceland ends a nearly 900-year dormancy with an explosive blast. It's beautiful, but what's really eye-catching is this. A live feed camera set up to observe the eruption captures what appears to be two mysterious blue orbs hovering in the plume of smoke above the lava. Both seem unfazed by the heat and toxic gases. And when we zoom into one, we can see just how blue it is. There are roughly 50 volcanic eruptions going on at any time around the world, and many include strange lights and flying objects like these. At Arenal Volcano in Costa Rica, and this incident in Puebla, Mexico, near the volcano called Popocatépetl. In fact, sightings near volcanoes are so common, filmmaker Darcy Weir produced a documentary called Volcanic UFO Mysteries about the phenomenon. We have so much documented evidence of UFOs around the volcanoes. It's possible that they may be energy events that could be offering a fueling supply to some of the UFO craft. Just one volcano can produce more power than the combined nuclear arsenals of the United States, China, and Russia. So UFOs could use the heat from the lava to store and produce energy. 
Or another theory, volcanoes provide access to a network of underground alien bases all over the world. Some people believe, well, if you build a base in a place that's very dangerous for people to visit, mankind that is, well, that's a perfect defense and no-go area. This goes back at least as far as 1947. Aviator Kenneth Arnold was flying over Mount Rainier, a dormant stratovolcano, and he claimed he saw a string of flying saucers. He's credited with coining that term. So why are UFOs attracted to volcanoes? And what exactly are we seeing in this video? Let's ask our experts. Let's consider the earthly explanations. First, could these be drones trying to record the eruption? Geologists studying volcanic eruptions will use drones that remotely transmit video back for scientific reasons. The temperature of lava spewing from a volcanic vent can reach 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt most earthly metals. For a drone, that would be a short one-way trip. But these orbs were visible for at least 30 minutes, far longer than drones could take the heat. And when we look at the volcano in daylight, a whole new set of theories arises. It's surrounded by hills, so maybe the orbs aren't actually in the air. They're on hillsides on the far side of the volcano. Could they be tourists or scientists with flashlights standing nearby to study the lava flow? Where the temperature around you could approach 500 degrees just in the air around you, where a piece of paper that you put down on the ground will instantly light up on fire and flash the flame immediately. It's very hot. It's not a place for humans. They could not be flashlights, in my view. So maybe the answer is that the orbs spewed from the volcano itself and landed on the surrounding hills. D'Antonio notes their strange color. You can have what has been termed as blue lava. It's actually sulfur that's burning and burning sulfur burns blue. Also known by the Indonesian term api biru, blue lava usually burns along the ground and not in the air, and it's not often seen in Iceland. Looking close, the stationary orbs do appear to be flatter on the bottom, suggesting they may actually be sitting on a surrounding slope. It's a very rare phenomenon, but it does happen. And I think that we're actually witnessing blue lava here as well. I think that it's fascinating. So we know blue lava is rare in Iceland, but that's going to be our verdict, at least for now. Still, that doesn't explain all those UFO sightings around volcanoes the world over. Darcy Weir continues to investigate the subject, and we will too. It's May 2020 in Calahorra, Spain. A local man named Juan Carlos Gil Lopez is walking through a nearby park on a bright spring day. Suddenly, he sees something so utterly mind-bending, he immediately has to film it to make sure he's not hallucinating. A line of fire is moving steadily across the ground. As it burns, it leaves behind green, undamaged grass. Look closely. The fire reaches benches and eventually trees, but none of that seems to burn. Juan was understandably stunned. I don't remember that there would have been something like this in this area. So, well, it was quite shocking and quite impactful to Humans are naturally fascinated by fire. It's an evolutionary survival mechanism developed to make us aware of these dangers from out of the womb. So there's a reason we're mesmerized by images like this Texas tree burning from inside and this downright devilish fire tornado seen in the UK in 2018. Is what Juan captured a similar freak of nature, or was it planned? The U.S. government regularly starts fires on purpose. These so-called controlled burns are meant to protect communities, restore habitats, and even control pests. Maybe that's what's going on here. In the U.S., 6.4 million acres were subject to controlled burns in 2017 alone. Is the Spanish government doing something similar here? Maybe it's just another video hoax. In case of emergency, break class and call in the experts. First, video forensics expert Michael Primo runs a test to make sure this isn't actually digital manipulation. When we were assessing the digital integrity of the file itself, there was a signature that came up using our forensic tool called MedEx that has the ability to make changes to a file while that sounds like a red flag, Primo digs deeper. 
Although this tool can make changes to a file, we didn't detect any evidence that this fire was created unnaturally in the video, and no evidence to support that this was CGI. We turn to atmospheric scientist Dr. Deanna Hentz to find out if conditions in this region of Spain would sustain a fire like this. Well, I looked at the climate conditions around the time that this video was filmed. In this particular region, it was actually quite wet. There was plenty of moisture in the environment through rainfall that could account for why everything was so green and lush. And because the fire is moving very quickly, that doesn't really leave a lot of time for the objects around it to dry out and then catch on fire. That explains why the grass and trees and benches don't ignite. But how would such a strangely shaped fire form in the first place? Our all-star physicist, Michio Kaku, shed some light on the matter. We don't have that much direct experience with large fires. And if you did, you would realize flames go in the direction where you have lots of oxygen, lots of tinder, and lots of surface area. Kaku explains that the white discoloration in the grass in the front of the flames is actually the fluffy seeds of the poplar trees around the park. That's what is actually catching fire and why the narrow flame is moving so fast. Notice here that the poplars are burning because that's where you have maximum surface area. The first things to burn will be those places where we have maximum surface area. In fact, the same principle that causes these poplar seeds to burn so quickly also applies in your own home. That's why a newspaper burns very fast while a log in a fireplace will take a lot of time for it to heat up because a newspaper for a given weight has a maximum amount of surface area. So, our verdict. While this mesmerizing fire appears to act mysteriously and contrary to nature, its bizarre behavior is actually an idiosyncrasy of environment and physics. Officials at this park believe the fire was started unintentionally from a cigarette or other stray spark.